Well, in this field right here to the north of my farm, Garrett had his old gray tempo, which, of course, he loves tempos, and he was using it as a battering ram, and other people were driving in the field too. And Garrett wanted to start a demolition derby, so he went out in that field, and all he did was sort of ramming into people as hard as he could with his tempo and hitting them at dangerous places, like where the passenger or driver was sitting, like in those doors. Rick was here witnessing all that. I missed it. I was somewhere else on the farm. Rick got very upset, and Garrett wouldn't stop. So Rick took my tractor, drove out onto the field there, and started damaging Garrett's already smashed up tempo to make it less able to operate so he wouldn't be able to do this anymore since Garrett wouldn't stop. Well this really pissed off Garrett really bad and Rick videotaped it. Garrett went into the, a huge temper tantrum screaming in rage, jumping up and down, you broke my tempo, you, oh, I hate you and, blah, and, and just threatening and then he started crying his eyes out and Rick videotaped the whole thing. This really pissed Garrett off even more. Well, Rick actually posted the video on YouTube, and everybody teased Garrett over this because the tempo was such a piece of shit. It was already smashed up, and Garrett was the one who was endangering people's lives. That's like the fifth crime, reckless endangerment of a human life by what he was doing. He was four Garrett was 14 at this time. He should have known a lot better, and especially he should have listened to us to stop. So Garrett requested over and over again for Rick to take the video off, and he didn't for a long time, and this pissed Garrett off even more. And he said he's never coming back to the farm now. Well, I had scolded him a couple times the night before, and then uh, Rick scolded him, scolded him the next day, and totally embarrassed him that Sunday afternoon. Nobody at the farm wanted Garrett to come back either after all the things he did that weekend. There was many other examples, but this weekend just was sort of was the icing on the cake. Garrett was starting to be a real jerk, and pushing people's buttons, not doing what he was told, and I told you about the other things he just did. So since he didn't come back, later that fall when the bylaw people got involved with trying to make me get rid of all my cars, I had Garrett smashed up dead tempo here, and I contacted him several times and asked him to remove it, but he wouldn't come back out. So fine with me, I had to get rid of the tempo anyways, because I had to clean up all the especially not working cars, and I gave it to Pug. Helped him load it on the trailer, and Pug got another free car that he took for scrap. I didn't make a nickel off this car. Uh, I bugged and bugged him. If he'd come and get it, I would give him another free car, give him a Saturn to go along with it. He, his dad has a car trailer, and he could have got a free Saturn to put on top of it. I would have crushed them both, and they could have got double their money. I was just trying to get rid of cars, and I was giving them to everybody for free. Now, to verify what I had just said, you can message Rick and ask him about the Tempo and Tractor incident that he had with Garrett. I'm not telling any lies. Maybe now you can kind of get the big picture and see why Garrett has kind of turned against us. Garrett did tell the truth one more time, and it's kind of embarrassing, but I'll admit to it. I was teaching Garrett how to fix a CV axle on his car that he had just broke. So, there's a CV axle. Then when you take the shaft out of the steering knuckle, there's a shaft that's, I guess, like a phallus shape and a hole it goes into and I told him to put the grease on and pretend you're like sliding a penis into a vagina and put the two parts back together so that part is true now for the strangest part of all Mary Garofolo from 169 on Global TV said she investigated this and contacted the family of the boy the 12 year old we were talking about earlier well did she really investigate or is she telling us a big lie like she has throughout the whole program he's not 12 years old he's 15 now and last summer he was 14, and the other, Garrett was 14, his other friend was 14, and the orange-haired kid, he was 16. So if Mary would have done any investigation, or at least talked to the police about this, because I know the police are investigating this too, she would have known that he was 14 and not 12 years old. But he was a small 14-year-old, and he really did only weigh 100 pounds. There is so much stuff that Mary Garofolo never investigated, but anyways, published a pack of lies without any verification. Even though sometimes I sent her verification on the things she lied about, she just ignored it. But I have an email record of it. You're going to be shocked when I tell more stories about what really happened at David's farm. And don't forget, every story has a minimum of two sides. It's just in Mary's world, stories only have one side. It's not the way it works in real life.